What is going on, everybody? It is Monday, February the 7th, and that means it's time for my News Radar. Let's start this video off with a brief update about the ongoing project to bring full fat official Windows 11 on ARM to the original Surface Duo. If you do not know what I'm talking about, I made a video about this a few days ago. I will try to remember to link to it in the description down below. Basically, there is a developer with a Surface Duo, someone who has an experience and a history with bringing Windows on ARM over to smartphones like the Lumia devices, and they are now doing the same magic on Surface Duo, and they tweeted this little image here saying that's cute it even knows the right icon basically this is a screenshot from surface duo running windows 11 and if we look here windows 11 actually knows what surface duo is and no this does not indicate that in some way windows 11 like was meant to be on duo or anything like that it just i think it more has to do with the fact that microsoft has sort of a ubiquitous maybe directory would be the right word to use of hardware ids and images to go along with them and in this instance it was able to see surface duo and it had an image of surface duo so it used it i don't think we should read any more into it than that but as you can see here we have some information obviously the ram is wrong five gigabytes and he mentions there in the tweet obviously that uh he knows that is a an issue with this but the ram is there for some reason it's just not seen all six gigs in this instance but there you go windows 11 is running on his device now there's a lot of work yet to be done as we scroll down here someone says what's what doesn't work running windows 11 undo and he says everything so we're talking about all the drivers effectively need to be made at this point. So we're talking about the GP, we're talking about touch, we're talking about cellular, we're talking about the modem, on and on and on and on and on and on. Everything needs to be done from here. And that's a lot of work to be done, but it's something that this guy, he's made a lot of progress in a very short amount of time, but you could also speculate maybe what progress he's made has been the easier stuff, right? But at any rate, I will definitely be keeping you apprised of the information and the news as it does break, so stay tuned for that. This is a rather strange news story because we know at this point what Samsung is about to announce here in the next couple of days. The S22 line of smartphones is just around the corner. Leaks have been out there left, right, front, and center. And now, taking fully part in leaking these smartphones is actually Samsung themselves as well as AT&T. Pretty funny story here from Pocket now showing a photo someone took of an AT&T store where they've prematurely hung up a banner of the S22 Ultra. You can see the S Pen right there fully on display. The S22 Standard Plus Pro, whatever they may go with there. But you can clearly see it there. That's the imagery. That's the device. Pretty funny. But then, strangely enough, Samsung doing the same thing on Facebook ads. Just full-on blow the cover on their own device by posting this and that's really funny because as of late Samsung has been very very guarded and very very angry and cross at people who've been leaking their devices going as far as to have tweets fully removed and basically trying to get people into trouble for copyright stuff and it's a little ridiculous if you ask me and now I mean I guess they gotta go go after themselves now because they're doing it to themselves maybe they gotta get mad I'm sure this AT&T store is probably gonna get in trouble for this somebody made a pretty big mistake here this is something that kind of hard to mess this one up you didn't read some paper there's probably a big thing that said don't hang until such date someone failed to do so and yeah there you go if you wanted if you were still somehow not sure what these phones were going to look like you should probably be pretty sure now here's another little interesting tidbit straight from the world of twitter this is a twitter user called albacore and they have leaked and kind of broken some news in the windows world on several different occasions and it looks as though they're doing something again here they said and i quote there's an interesting personalization feature coming to windows 11 stickers for your wallpaper you'll be able to configure them Using a new sticker editor app, they'll persist across wallpaper changes. As long as you don't use a slideshow, use fill, fit, and have only one monitor. So 
If we look at these images here, you'll see choose stickers for your wallpaper and then a right click on the desktop gives you the option to edit stickers. So I guess my question is, what is a sticker for your wallpaper? I guess in my mind, I'm thinking of like a sticky note, right? So you've got your desktop there that might have icons on, it might be blank, whatever. And you will be able to basically pin a sticky note to your desktop as a reminder to do something, something like that. Personally, I would love to just see what they're doing on the widgets panel on Windows 11. Let me take the widgets off that panel and just put it on my desktop and then, I don't know, give us some good widgets, some things worth using. And I feel like that would be a better option than, than whatever this is supposed to be. Like, why, why do we have widgets over here and then stickers on the desktop? You've got widgets. Just do widgets there. Why are widgets, if widgets are good, why are you hiding them on a thing that I forget that they ever existed. I don't ever think about that widgets panel. I don't use it. I'm probably never going to use it, at least not until there are third party widgets that are worth using. But again, if they're good, let me just put them on the desktop. Why not? Why, why tuck them away? This is rather odd and I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on this. Stickers, widgets, do you want them on the desktop? Are you like me? Are you one of these people? Who does what I do, and I have my icons fully disabled on my desktop. I can't stand when I see a computer, and it's just full of icons, just loaded down. That drives me absolutely crazy. So my desktop is clean and clear. Although I do feel like some notes or something, like a widget like I'm talking, might be okay. Let me know what you guys think. One of the cooler things to me that has happened over the last few years in regards to interesting phone designs and in coordination with the rise of folding OLED screens has been the reemergence, the resurfacing of the Motorola Razor. I think that this thing looks quite good. My wife has the Z Flip and it looks very good, but there's something about the design of the Razor that harkens back to those ye olden days back when smartphones all kind of look like this, but then you open the thing up and you've got this big, beautiful display. Motorola's been doing some really good stuff with their phones lately, and in fact, their sales numbers are on the rise. They're actually kind of reasserting themselves as a player as of late. And this patent here from Motorola indicates that they're not done experimenting and doing weird things yet, because when you look at the Razer, or the Z Flip, or really any phone that is a foldable OLED to screen. There's two ways you can go about creating these phones. So with the Razer and the Flip, you've got a screen on the inside that folds shut, and then you have a fully closed device. And most people at this point, similar you know, to the critique we hear sometimes with Duo, is that there's no display to interact with until the thing is open, right? That's a complaint some people have. So with the Razer and the Flip, you put a cover display on it. There is a similar complaint with something like the Z Fold. When it's closed, you've got a cover display that you can continue using while the thing is closed and then open it up to actually use the tablet. Boy, that is such a satisfying sound. Can you listen to that for a second? That's, that's just so good. Which one sounds more satisfying, the Z Fold? Or the Surface Duo? Very different sounds, let me know. Anywho, cover display. So there's another way to go about this though. And the other way to go about it would be to just fold the other way around. So if I grab my fold again, then it's not put away. If you fold this way back the other direction, you just have screen on both sides. The screen is still exposed. You get your smaller form factor, but the screen is still exposed, which would allow you to just not have a cover display, potentially making a thinner device, albeit a more fragile device. Well, here is a patent from Motorola, which I've not really seen this done, where they are literally taking this design but applying it to something like the Razer. We've seen Huawei make a phone like a fold that folds around the other way with the Mate XS. You can see exactly what I'm talking about here, but it is not something that we've seen applied to the flip phone style device, but it is interesting because then you wind up with something where you don't need that cover display. Perhaps you can have a hole punch selfie camera there, right? Obviously you're not going to put it in the middle of the display. That would be a terrible thing to do, but you could put it up there if you wanted to do that. And then you're going to put your actual like primary camera maybe down there, which is a little bit weird 
because you're gonna have a camera next to like your microphone for phone calls and then I guess if you wanted to take a selfie you're in phone mode you're here you can just flip it around and then that's your viewfinder and then there's your camera if you want to take a picture in full phone mode well the camera's already facing outward so I guess maybe you don't need a hole punch I guess that's what you would do if you want to take a selfie you're just gonna fold the display back around and take it that way and I guess that would work okay coming from someone who did use a Surface Duo with the one camera for quite some time I suppose I could get used to it but just like with the Mate XS this is what always scares me it's that edge right there you know what I mean? Like that's always just exposed. And it seems like with a lot of phones, the edges of the screen, that's the part that gets damaged in particular with curved displays. Well, this is like an uber curved display and it's not made of, of corning gorilla glass. It's, it's an ultra thin glass or it's a plastic with a cover on it. You know, I would be deeply concerned of how this thing would hold up over time. But I do love to see something so experimental as this. And who knows, maybe as ultra thin glass moves along and gets more and more durable, maybe this is something that will make sense down the line. Do sound off in the comments down below. And of course, thanks for making it to the end of today's episode of News Writer. I will see you on the next video, which we'll post every Monday and Friday. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.